We're one species, number one. We're in the solar system. We're in the Milky Way galaxy. We're in the universe. We're on this, as Carl Sagan referred to, this pale blue dot. We can only get so far off of it, and we can only go but so far below it. So we really have to work together. And I think if we begin to look at it as a Venn diagram, the overlapping interests, the fact that we're on this planet and share this space, I think we can begin to have a deeper discussion. Because politics aside, we're human. Politics aside, we have the same desires, irrespective of where we are in the world. And so a part of that, I think, is to begin to ask the critical questions. And first of all, what role am I playing locally? What can I do in my own social sphere to help make it better? I think part of that process is turning our attention within. Now, I'm biased in terms of meditation because my wife and I, we manage the Transcendental Meditation Program from Metropolitan Boston. So I'm biased in terms of turning my attention within. Plus two, for the last 24 years since undergrad, I've actually researched material such as this. And every great thinker throughout time has caused us to ask more questions, caused us to turn our attention within. And speaking of artists, artists, I believe, honestly, good artists, and all of you are really good artists here, you are, as Abdul Baha'i would say, you are the pupil of the eye. You are the lens through which you see and interpret the world, but what you see on, and project onto the canvas is made available for us to examine. But not only examine the art, but also examine ourselves in a way that is causing us to turn our attention within. I think of Mark Rothko. My wife and I, we traveled quite a bit before our children were born. And we were, <laughs> those of you who are parents who really understand that, we were in Kansas City, Nelson Atkins Museum, and we walk in, and I'd never encountered Rothko's art before. There's this huge piece, probably about as tall as this from floor to ceiling. It's this black and brown piece, and I walk into the room, and there was this, this palpable silence that was there. My wife says, do you, do you feel that? And I said, I feel that. I said, wow. And you realize that what he was trying to do was to draw you into his experience of consciousness. To help you understand that fundamentally humans are connected. We have as our base what the ancients referred to as pure consciousness, what physics referred to as the ground state. We have it within us. And it is an opportunity for us to turn our attention within. So just as great art has the capacity to do that, we also have the capacity through other means to do that. We can sit in our homes, ask the questions, be unafraid to ask the questions, be unafraid to talk with one another. Because People are going to have different perspectives, and we often are at odds with one another. But when you stop to think about the fact that we're on this planet, we are in the solar system, we're in the Milky Way galaxy, we are in the universe. And if we accept the fact that what the best science says that the universe is 13.8 billion years ago, 13.8 billion years old, your journey began 13.8 billion years ago, and you are here in this moment. The question becomes, given that all of us may live, what, four score? Maybe a little more. The question becomes, are you going to make the most of it? Or are you going to squander your opportunity to be a human, to have an impact on the world around you? Each of us has a place, each of us has a role to play. Do you take it seriously? Or as my dad would say, do you whine about the situation as it is? Or do you take action? I'm one who says taking action is important. And the first step of taking action is to first know thyself. Temet nos, Latin. Know yourself. Turn your attention within to have that fundamental experience. And then act. Maharshi would often say, meditate, then act. Don't just act, because if you act, you're misdirected, you're undirected. Yet, you want to have a blueprint. Have an idea of what it is you want to accomplish, what you want to contribute. Once you can gather that understanding, you have this plan. You put it into action. So I understand having the discussions. I'm all about the discussion. But I'm also about action as well. And that can be something so small as being kind to one another. Seeing someone on social media saying something that you know is wrong and it's not, how should we say, you know, nice. Shift the discussion a little bit. Because the reality is everybody wants the same thing. We want to have good families. We want to have great relationships. We want to have some peace of mind. We want to have comfort. We want to move beyond the, the lower level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs to move towards self-actualization. And a part of that process is really having the conversations but turning our attention within. I think it's really important. And 
don't get lost in all the stuff that's happening because one could argue many people are being gaslighted right now to cause us to turn our attention away from one another, to cause us to not recognize that fundamentally we are a species. I often equate each of us as cells within the body. Your body is comprised of literally trillions of cells. And you can think of each of those cells as a human. You can think of that cell as a bit of consciousness. So too are we a bit of consciousness. It makes its way into the world through us. Because remember, and never forget it, everything that we as humans have ever devised began as an idea. Think about that for a moment. There isn't a thing that humans have devised that is not a monument to an idea. Even our presentation of self is a monument to an idea. Pieces of art, monuments to an idea that's had in that moment that's brought to fruition. A business, a culture, a religion, a city, a vehicle, glasses, whatever it is, all monuments to ideas. Now, take it a step further, as a human, you are part of this fundamental intelligence that's present everywhere in the universe. So in some way, you could think of it as it's making its way to the world through you. If your judgment is clouded, the results are going to be clouded. If your judgment is clear, the results will be what? Clear. Clear your minds. Take the time to sit quietly. Turn your attention within. Don't be so, how shall I say, dismayed. Be aware, but don't be dismayed. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. Ask the tough questions. Have the tough conversations. That's the only way you, I, and others can be better. I often say to people, there are really two types of people in the world. One, the person who doesn't know themselves as being a fundamentally conscious being. That person will tell you that you can't accomplish a specific task, whatever it may be. They'll tell you their story, not your story. I can forgive that person because they don't know themselves. The other person is the one who understands how the mind works and how the brain is functioning. Because when you have an experience, a connection is created and you bring over time that connection strengthens. That then informs your dominant way of thinking and being in the world. So if a person can give you an idea upon which to gnaw, oh, you're a horrible person, or you'll never succeed, just as anything that you've ever began that was initially difficult, that is not easy for you, the only reason it is so is via repetition. Anything. The connections within your brain have strengthened. That then informs the dominant way of thinking. Once you understand what's happening in the course, then you can navigate it much more successfully. You can do things, however small, much more easily because you have an end goal in mind. And that end goal is to really help. You never know the person who will hear what it is you have to say and agree with it and then act on it. There's a wonderful video my wife saw, we saw it a few years ago. There was a, a couple. They were on a bus, and this gentleman performs a kind act for the woman. Unbeknownst to them, they were being observed. This woman then goes out and performs a kind act for someone else. Performing a kind act, not to gain any notoriety for it, as my mom would say, do your things, do your alms, and shut up about it. You do that, that kind act is going to live on. The world right now, my wife and I argue, needs to have more light, more people asking the tough questions, more people willing to have the conversations to make things a bit better. And so each of you here, those of you who are artists, those of you who are you know, connoisseurs of art, those of you who want to play at it, we all have a role to play. And that role can be small, it can be large, but whatever it is, play your role. What is the first word in word meditation? Take a closer look. Ooh. Me? Ooh. Yes. Uh, me. I thought men. <laughs> men. That is a common response. I think it's common because we never, we rarely think about turning the hand and giving to ourselves. We often want to give to everyone and everything, whether it be family, friends, colleagues, even our communities. We want to give to them. But at some point, if you're consistently giving to others and no one is giving to you, what's going to happen? Burn out. You become annoyed. You feel as if you're being taken advantage of. And taking the time to view, as in this case of meditation, or specifically transcendental meditation, to view it as your me time. Twice a day, you sit to practice the technique to allow your mind to settle, to allow your body to settle, allow your mind to normalize, and your body to normalize. And you have this clarity that when you come out into activity, you know exactly what it is you're going to do. 
to how you're going to achieve it. And if you don't have a clear plan, give it time and it will develop. You can never underestimate the power of clarity of mind. I often say to people, we make our best decisions when we have clarity. Our worst decisions <laughs> when we lack clarity. How many times have you ever said or done something only later to realize, you wince, I should have never said that. I should have never done that. It happens to all of us. I love what Ray Dalio says. He says, what is it that I don't know? Ask yourself the question. That to me is the mark of a wise person that's willing to learn. What is it that I don't know? That's humbling yourself before someone who may know more than you. And as a result of that, you open yourself up to the possibility of not only thinking differently, but doing differently. Because every action is preceded by what? A thought. Again, if we recognize that everything is a monument to an idea, your action is a monument to an idea. Your action is a monument to a thought. Every action is preceded by thought. And if your thinking is clear, your actions are going to be that much clearer. My wife began the teacher training course in July 20, 2012. She completed December 20th. The men's course was in Antrim, New Hampshire, August 20th to January 20th. The foundation approached us to come into the metropolitan Boston area to reconstitute Transcendental Meditation. It hadn't been taught in Cambridge proper since about 1997. It was located at Gertrude Garden Street. Center closed and you know, over in Cambridge. And so it hadn't been here. The activity farther out, Shrewsbury, South Weymouth, Lincoln Concord, the Cape, but nothing right here in this area. So they approached us. After five winters in Iowa, we were a bit <laughs> skittish. <laughs> we were a bit skittish about coming to cold weather. We, we had our sights obviously set on Southern California or somewhere in the Bay Area, uh, we had family there. And it worked out where we are here. <laughs> So the objective behind Transcendental Meditation is a simple mental technique that allows the mind to settle, allows you to transcend your thinking mind. You can think of the mind in this way. You have the active level of your mind, kind of like art, the image itself. You have the thoughts populating your mind. You can think of the thoughts as the colors, the strokes, and the, the design itself. But you also have this silent, settled aspect of your mind. You can think of that as the canvas. You have the capacity to transcend your thinking mind. The way it works with TM is that it's used a mantra. A mantra, you can think of it as a Sanskrit word that simply means a sound whose effects are known. Transcending the strokes to experience the quiet canvas below. I often ask people, you know, is the canvas still white? So in this case, it's a sandy color. But people will say, no, the canvas is still just this covered. But it's fascinating when you stop and consider that the painting couldn't be what it is were it not for the canvas, just as you couldn't be what you are were it not for your thought processes. But when you transcend all of that, going beyond, transcend simply means to go beyond. As you go beyond it, you begin to realize that yes, you do have the capacity for your mind to settle. You do have the capacity for clarity. You do have the capacity to focus much more keenly. The capacity rests within you. You've never not as a human had the capacity to have the experience. You may have had in moments, you know, while you're writing or when you are painting, you have this moment where you feel at one with everything. To have the experience on a repeated basis, that strengthens, that connection, again, going back to the 70 billion connections you create per day in your brain, that connection strengthens so much so that over time, you bring a bit of that quietude and activity with you. You have this junction point that's created between stimulus and potential reaction this junction point that's created from which all of your best ideas surface, and they surface in a spontaneous way. You make the best decisions in a very spontaneous way. That's what TM is about. And in terms of connecting that with what you want to do here as artists, as humans, as citizens of this planet, notice it says citizens of the planet. I didn't say citizens of a country. I didn't say citizens of a state, of the planet. You want to have quietude. You want to realize your best and your highest self. That's your birthright. TM is a way to help you make that a reality. It's helping you to become stronger internally, so much so that you're much stronger outside. Destructive in the sense that you are deconstructing another person's perceptions about what is possible. Because a person can then say all of a sudden, oh wow, what is your name by the way, the mask? Jeff. Jeff. Well, Jeff didn't react the way he normally reacts. So all of a sudden, you've tossed them off their center, their axis, because you didn't react. You didn't react to whatever they were, the stimuli they were presenting to you. 
With regular practice, in this case of TM, the mind settles so much so that you bring it into your day. And you don't react to situations, you respond to situations in, much, in a much more thoughtful manner. So you bring the best to bear on the situation. And so I say deconstructive because you're deconstructing the person's mindset surrounding how you were supposed to, in their mind, react to the situation. You responded in a much more thoughtful way. And as a result of that, they have to take a step or two back and ask more questions. Now, I'm not dealing with the same Jeff I was two weeks ago. Something's different here. This is you, you all of us have agency. We never believe that you have no agency. We all do and have always had it. It's simply realizing it, but more importantly, realizing it, acting on it. Because how many times have we known something, knowing it's the best thing to do, yet for whatever reason choose not to act on it? Right. When you have clarity, when you know what it is you want to accomplish, you act on it much more easily, much more readily, and with great results. So I would say it's both constructive and destructive simultaneously. But if, if a person can present to you an idea, and it's attractive in that moment, you will accept it without question. Who was it? Uh, Kierkegaard, one of my favorite philosophers. He says, people demand freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought, which they seldom use. <laughs> Ouch. You know, you know it, it's something to consider. And as we inform ourselves, as we enlighten our minds with ideas, because again, you, you walk into this place in the morning, can you physically remove darkness from this place, Mark? Um, turn on the light. By turning on the light? Exactly. All you can do is turn on, you can introduce a second element. So to have your mind become different, you have to introduce a second element. Information, ideas, those are the second elements. Once you understand, it's called the principle of the second element of physics. Once you understand that you need to introduce light, in this case, introduce ideas, introduce information, that then will make a connection within your brain. Remember, everything that you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and yes, even sense, creates a connection within your brain. Over time, with illumination over those experiences, those connections strengthen. At night when you fall asleep, all connections need not be retained. You undergo what's called structured forgetting. The connections that are not meant to have a long-term impact begin to unravel. Those that are, they strengthen. This is why when you learn a new language, how many of you learned a language and at one point began dreaming in the language? Mm -hmm. It happens because the connections within your brain have strengthened over time. Because you've gained some degree of mastery over the language itself. Mm -hmm. Similarly so with ideas. When you introduce yourself to new ideas, initially they may be difficult to grasp. But with repeated exposure, you gain some degree of mastery over the information. Every moment of every day is an opportunity to turn it all around. If you think of it as being filled with despair, because of how the brain functions, you're going to see more despair. I'm not saying be unaware of what's happening. I'm not, I would never suggest that. What I will suggest, however, is you have the capacity to turn it around, even locally. And locally rips out, ripples out much further than you could ever imagine. You never know with whom you're speaking. You never know who's overhearing the conversation. You never know who's reading your horrible mean tweets online. <laughs> or who's reading your very good tweets online. Be a point of reference. Be a point of what's possible. I mean, be the change. I know that sounds trite, but right now I think you know, we have an opportunity to do something different. It's up to us to do it individually, locally, and then let it ripple out.